right. And so I'm looking forward to uh, this service. How has the Beyond the Resolution service been for you? Have, are you? Are you getting something out of it? Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Uh, so what I want to do in the time that we have together is I want to do just a quick review and I want you to put these in your notes um, because I want you to work it. Uh, there was a, a great, great luminary. We all know her well. She says it works if we work it. The um, corollary of that is if you don't work it, it won't work. And so I just want you to just quickly put this in your notes so that you can uh, have it in a condensed version to work with as you are saying yes to uh, giving birth to the good desires of your heart, to your resolution, to your goals, to your dream. The first thing I wanna, want you to write down is review my past year. Review my past year. Repeat it after me. Second thing I want you to write down is separate the facts from the fiction. Say, repeat it. Third thing I want you to write down and repeat is commit to your desired outcome. The fourth thing, and if we're going too fast and you can't write it down and repeat it, you will have to get the tape or the CD. The fourth thing I want you to write down is uh, exercise my power of thought. The next thing I want you to write down is Work my power of belief. Very good. Don't get tired. Do not grow weary in well-doing. Next thing I want you to write down and affirm is uh, I will use the power of my spoken word. And then on last week, we talked about the opportunity that we all have to just do it. And we looked at some things that prevent us from just doing it. The first thing that we looked at, I want you to write this down and repeat it after me. The first thing that we explored is procrastination. Someone say procrastination. procrastination. Now, when you are working with procrastination, you don't have to write this down, but I just want to give it to you parenthetically. When you're working with procrastination, one of the things I need you to do is determine for yourself if whether or not the idea or the dream or the goal that you are working on is in a stage of procrastination or in a stage of incubation. I meant to say this to you on last week. How can you tell the difference? If you are putting off what needs to be done, if you are neglecting to do the urgent or the important, you know you have the wherewithal to do it and you're just not doing it, that may be procrastination. It's incubation if, on the other hand, you are just providing a safe environment for the idea, the dream, the seed, the goal to nurture because you are intuitively aware that it is not time yet. So before you launch out into it, you want to make sure it's ready. So I need you to be able to distinguish the di difference between what? Excellent. The next thing I want you to write down is I'm coming out of my comfort zone. All right. And then last but not least on last week, we talked about coming out of fear and not letting fear keep us from just doing it. Is that right? And so on today, what we want to do is work with this idea that it is worth the risk. How are we defining risk? We are defining risk as the exposure to a chance of injury or loss. As I'm talking about risk, I'm talking about the exposure to the chance of injury or loss. Taking risk does not necessarily mean that we will succeed. As a matter of fact, the process of taking risks may sometimes lead to success, but it might at other times lead to difficulty or disappointment. And many of us have a difficult time dealing with the uncertainty that comes along with taking risk. There is a feeling of uneasiness that can grow out of not being able to predict what will happen next. Sometimes just moving yourself to the place where you can be comfortable with not knowing is uncomfortable. And not to mention the fact that we are brought of age being taught that a bird in the hand. Right? And so we're not only conditioned to be content 
with what we have. But we're content, to, we're conditioned to not risk what we have. And sometimes in order to get to your next thing, you have to be willing to release the thing that you have right now. So we can be intimidated with the worries and the consequences of taking a risk. And we can also overlook the consequence that not taking the risk is actually also a risk. Let me say it to you this way. If I do not make the necessary changes that I need to make in order to uh, live my life to the fullest, then I have to get ready to deal with what I have and learn to be okay with it. Because if I don't make the changes, then what I have right now is what I will always have. So there is, a, there is a, not only a risk in the unknown, there is a risk in settling for the known. Are you with me? So what do I do? I activate my faith. I activate that spiritual muscle that helps me to uh, be okay with recognizing that it's worth the risk. So there are just some things I want to give you today to be willing to risk because it's worth the risk. The first thing I want to challenge you to be willing to risk is to just be willing to risk rejection. If you're someone who is trying to achieve success, the success, the success you suspect you deserve, and you're trying to experience and uh, come into that success without risking rejection, if you are unwilling to risk rejection, you can never be successful in the long run. In order to be successful, you have to be willing to risk rejection. In order to experience the kind of life you deserve to experience, in order to get the date with the person you would like to go out with, you gotta be willing to risk. Rejection. In order to uh, open yourself up to an opportunity or a partnership, you've got to be willing to risk rejection. In order to be accepted, you've got to be willing to risk rejection. And here's the thing. All of us want to be a part of something. That is a part of the allure and the power and the magnetism of church. See, we all want to belong. That's a part of the, the lore and the magnetism of, of fraternities or sororities. It's an opportunity to belong. As a former thug, that's a power, that's a part of the power and the magnetism of gangs. Because if you can't fit over in over here, maybe you can fit in over there. So we're all just looking for a place to fit in. But sometimes fitting in means running the risk of being rejected. Sometimes attempting to fit in means running the risk of putting yourself out there and not getting back what it is you're trying to put out. The founder of this ministry, the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman, in order to be what she became, had to run the risk of rejection. And not only did she risk it, she faced plenty of it. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, who we celebrate on this weekend, as we celebrate and laud him, and there are streets in every city named after him, and many of the ministers in those cities rejected him when he came to those very cities. In order to be, do, and have what you desire to be, do, and have, you've got to be willing to risk rejection. I remember the, the, the first time I was here, sitting right over there where Howard is sitting, and I heard Reverend Coleman say, um, what other people think about you is none of your business. And Walt, I don't think I heard anything that else she said for the next 10 minutes because that was a new concept to me. I had to think about that and pull that thing apart and try to rationalize how come and why come what other people think about me is none of my business. See, because I would, if, 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 if I'm, I, 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 I'm someone who used to have abandonment issues and because I had abandonment issues, that means I also had rejection issues. I would rather not ask you than have you tell me no. 
Can I let you in on a little secret? If I don't ask, the answer is already no. So I am rejecting myself before I even get an opportunity to get to yes. Are you with me? And so that thing sat on me like, what? They think about me? It's none of my business. If I got my leather pants on and my wool jacket on in July, and folks are trying to figure out why I'm sweating and the air conditioning on. But I was willing to risk rejection. There's someone in the scripture who I want us to walk with today who was willing to risk rejection. She is one of my favorite characters in all of scripture. And we remember that the people and the places in scripture represent the states and stages and the journey of consciousness in our own soul. I like the way Luke introduces us to her because when Luke talks about her, Luke talks about her just a little bit differently than Matthew and Mark does. You know, you might know her as the woman with the issue. Anybody familiar with her? The woman with the issue when she is introduced to us in the gospel according to Luke, Luke helps us to see that this woman has tried everything. But even before she tried everything and before she came out into the public square, if she had issues, part of that issue meant she had no business being where her blessing was. I don't want you to miss that. Because some of us have to be willing to risk the rejection of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the judging stare. We've got to be willing to risk the rejection of the pointing finger. We've got to be willing to risk the rejection of thinking that folk know what we're going through. So that we can position ourselves to be in the place where our blessing and breakthrough happens. She had no business being in the place where Jesus was coming through. And so even if she tried to hide herself, there were no doubt people who knew she had no business being there. And so one of the things that she absolutely had to contend with was her sense of making it worth the risk. And so what did she do? She posted up in the most inconspicuous place that she could. But how many of you know when famous people are all around, there's really no place to hide? See, when the master teacher is coming through, there's really no place to hide because everybody wants to be close to the master teacher. And so she had to be willing to risk the scorn and the ridicule and the opinions and the comments and the dirty stares of people who called themselves. <laughs> believers and people of the way. Just so that she might have the opportunity. See, let me let you in on a little secret. Before she takes the risk of being rejected, she doesn't even know if touching the master teacher's garment is gonna work. What I like about Luke is Luke tells us that everything else that she tried failed. Everything else that she did did not work. So not only does she have to be willing to risk rejection, she's got to be willing to risk the second thing. She's got to be willing to risk failure. Luke says she spent all she had. She spent all she had looking for the solution. And so here she is, posted up by the side of the road, suffering under her own sense of unworthiness, burdened by the opinions of others, and then still not sure if it's worth the risk, not only the re risk of rejection, but if it's worth the risk of failure. So she spent everything and this Matthew says uh, Luke says and she came up behind him and touched the hem of his cloak and then it says the hemorrhaging stopped 
I believe there's a lesson there for us. See, for, 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 for people who are averse to risk, they want the reward, but they don't want the adversity. See, people who are averse to risk, they want the water, but they don't want the wet. People who are averse to risk, they want the, they want the eggs, but they don't want to kill any chickens. Are you with me? And so if we're going to experience what is on the next phase of development and enjoyment and purpose for us, we've got to be willing to risk failure. And can I let you in on a little secret? Failure is just a part of the process. Failure is just one of those things that you have to keep using until you help get the lesson that that's just the way to not do it. So you might be on marriage number seven. That just means you know seven ways that it does not work. You might be on business idea number 12. That just means you know 12 ways that it doesn't work. So failure doesn't have to or it might be disappointing, but it doesn't have to be defining. Are you with me? So we have to be willing to go through the adversity that failure possibly brings with it. I love the quote by Cabot Robert who says, if we study the lives of great men and women carefully and unemotionally, we find that invariably their greatness was developed, tested, and revealed through the darker period of their times. That means sometimes, just like the seed that is planted in the soil, the growth is happening in the darkness. Sometimes the person we are becoming, we are becoming that as we work through the adversity of it not working for us. Sometimes who we are to become, we don't get a chance to become if we're unwilling to risk being rejected and if we're unwilling to risk being a failure. I'll never forget in... 2008, 2009, before I was a serving in this role that I serve in right now, I've been serving in for uh, almost nine years. Someone shared a, a statement that someone made. They said, that Reverend Wells is as dumb as a box of chocolates. And his head is just as empty. That's somebody who's saying like, I don't really rock with him and he don't really rock with me. Around that same time, as we were going through the process of evolving. And as I sat across the table from people I know and love, thinking that it was the right time to be the leader of this ministry, the people looked back at me and they said, we think we need something else. We don't really think you're it. And my heart was crushed. I felt like a failure. Because all I wanted to do was my part to serve this ministry, to serve the people of this ministry. And so I had to go and sit with myself. And like the woman with the issues, I had to go and reconnect to what I had been taught and to see if I could touch the hem of the garment of the Christ presence within me so that I could just be okay with what other people thought because my teacher taught me that what other people think about you is none of your business. I had to, I had to, I had to go 
and uh, see if I could touch and reconnect to the him. Because not only did being rejected hurt, it made me feel like a failure. And so what do you do when you feel like a failure? What do you do when you think that what you think it's time for, it may not be time for? See, Scripture says for everything, there is a season. And here is what I know now on the other side of that late part of 2000 and uh, the decade of 2000. Here is what I know now. I wasn't ready. I thank God for the time, just like the woman with the issue, to sit back and be in the environment of incubation so God could work with me so that I could be what was needed in the right season. And just being okay and able to reconnect with the faith helped me to overcome the sense of failure. Are you with me? So we've got to be willing to risk rejection. We got to be willing to risk fear, failure. Last but not least, we got to be willing to risk exposure. Once she touched the master teacher's garment, he started to look around and he said, wait a minute. He said, someone just touched me. He said, I felt the virtue leave from me. And Peter says, man, are you kidding? Look at all these people around you. You're talking about somebody touching you. There are lots of people touching you. He said, no, this is a different kind of touch. See, this is a touch that is taking something that it needs. And, and I just want you to know, see, when Peter is not able to answer the question, sometimes your faith might not be able to answer the question, but it can still connect you to the, to the breakthrough. See, when Peter says, I don't know, sometimes it's your faith is not going to be able to answer why this happened to you. Sometimes your faith is not going to be able to answer why they couldn't keep their promise. Sometimes your faith is not going to be able to answer why didn't it happen in my time. Sometimes your faith is not going to be able to answer the challenge, but it will be able to connect to the healing. And so Jesus looks down at her and he says, once she exposed herself, Daughter, your faith has made you well, right? So her faith, well, I don't want you to miss this. Not Jesus' faith. I don't want you to miss it. Not God's desire for her. I don't want you to miss it. It was, no, say it louder. Say it like you know it because you have the kind of faith that when you connect to the Christ presence, it will start to move things in your life, world, and affairs. But you've got to be willing to expose it. See, you can't keep your faith within the shackles of the limitations of where you are right now. You have to let your faith move outside of what you're seeing. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. When almost 60 years ago now, when Dr. King was giving what came to be known as the I have a dream speech, he's about 12 minutes into his speech. And in the background, <laughs> Mahalia Jackson whispers, Tell them about the dream, Martin. Tell them about the dream, doctor. See, and at that point, Dr. King went from his prepared notes to what God had showed him in faith. Let me, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. See, he went from being a great teacher to being exposed as a prophet for all humankind. See, there is something in you that you just have to be willing to take the risk to expose it. It's okay if people see that you are better than they think you are. 
<laughs> it's even okay if they see that you better than what y'all been through. It's okay if they see that where you are is no longer where y'all are together. It's okay if people see what God sees in you and see what God placed in you, but you've got to be willing to expose yourself and stop hiding the light that God put in you under a basket and playing small for people who are small-minded. It's time to let yourself out and let your light shine. It's time to speak truth to power. It's time to be what God created you to be and not settle for less. Even though that less is comfortable. It's not really who you are. There is a next great version of you. Will you expose that version of yourself to the world? Will you run the risk of people looking at you Say she thinks she all that. <laughs> she out there with them people now. <laughs> all them big, all them big, them, them big thinking people. I've been around people who think big, and I've been around people who think small. Give me, give me the big thinking people. <laughs> One of the things that I appreciate about my grandmother is she could always see a version of me that hadn't been exposed yet. She always knew that there was something more in me. She is the one who taught me how to love black people. She is the one who taught me how to stick together with folk who look like you. She is the one who told me, if you don't take them Nikes off and we are boycotting Nike, I'll throw you out that window, boy. <laughs> and she meant it. Because she saw something in me that needed to be exposed. And I see something in you that needs to be exposed. I see something in you that's trying to come out. I see something in you that is intended to be a blessing not only to you, not only to this community, not just to your family, but to the world. The next, Oprah Winfrey. Right here. The next, Barack Obama. Right here. The next, Denmark Vesey. Right here. The next Martin Luther King. Right here. The next Duke Ellington. Right here. The next Sojourner Truth. Right here. The next Mahalia Jackson. Right here. The next great version of you. Right here. The only question is, is it worth the risk? Is it worth the risk of people being uncomfortable with who you truly are? Is it worth the disruption that it will create in your life to allow yourself to let your life shine? Is it worth it to let God be what God is in your life and to let that so shine that men and women will see your good works and glorify the Father. Only you can answer that question. But here is what I will tell you. If you determine that it's worth the risk and you activate your faith, God will take the journey with you. God bless you.